Hey everyone, I'm Jim Classic, and you are watching Geekin' It. Today, I will be doing a toy review of Transformers Studio Series Leader Class Blackout. Now, Blackout is from the Transformers Movieverse series, um, the Michael Bay one, and the Studio Series is meant to be a more screen-accurate portrayal of some of the Movieverse figures. Now, there are a couple of deluxes, like Ratchet and Stinger and Crankcase or Bumblebee or whatever, and they're mostly shell-forming. We have a few Voyagers like Starscream and Optimus Prime, and two of the darlings of this line are Blackout and uh, Grimlock from Age of Extinction, which I also have. I'll do a video of him as well. So I am looking forward to opening this guy up and taking a look. Now, I have to say, I am not a huge fan of the Bayformers universe. I'm just not. Um, but I do like Blackout. Blackout is a bit of a fan favorite. Um, in his debut in the 2007 movie, in that scene, in the opening scene with the desert and the army base and everything, you know, you see this chopper come to life and this 30-foot monster just destroys everything. It was a really, really good scene. And, you know, it really kind of gave you hope for the Transformers movie. You know, and then you find out it's pretty much just a spiraling nonsense of disappointments, but, you know, whatever. I'm still looking forward to checking out the toy here. So, so here we go. So, looking at the box, obviously we have a nice, um, you know, open window of blackout in robot mode. We see the Transformers banner. Again, that's pretty much the standard now. A really cool piece of artwork right there. You know, Studio Series number eight, I guess, number eight in the line. Like I said, there's four deluxes, two Voyagers, so, you know, blah, blah, blah. Um, math, all that stuff. On the side, again, nice artwork, ugly face. 08, Studio Series, Luger Class, Blackout, in many languages. On the back, um, you know, big screen inspired, scale detail, etc., etc., desert base assault. Uh, product shot, product shot, product shot. Collect them all. You know, Optimus Prime, Grimlock. Nice little background. Blah, blah, blah. And just nothing at the bottom. So, let's open them up, shall we? And here we have Blackout in his helicopter mode. And I have to say, it's, um... It's a, it's a pretty big vehicle mode. <laughs> it really is. Um, Blackout is a military transport chopper. It is nicely detailed. It's pretty frickin' big. Pretty long, at the very least. And the colors are, yeah, gray and, and, and dark gray. That's pretty much it. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it, it's detailed. It's got nice, like, cool rivets and divots and doors and windows and... Etc. You know, it's got a lot of cool detail. It's got a lot of nice detail. I mean, this is a little star there is painted and stuff, and it's got some cool designs. It looks nice. It's just, you know, it's very gray. It's very gray, very monochromatic. Um, does have Blackout's name on the tail there. Um, it has a minicon port, I guess. I don't know. No, not really. <laughs> looks like it could be a minicon port. But um, it, it does it does look like a good vehicle mode, with the exception of yeah, the panels frequently have been detaching themselves, um, which is a little frustrating. It's very panelly, lots of stuff that doesn't want to lock into place, so that's kind of sucks. Um, also, I do see a little bit of st stress marks here on the helicopter blade, uh, a little bit there. Actually, that might be the only one. That might be the only one with the stre stress stress marks, but um, it does. You know, it, it it rotates, not well, but that's fine. You know, the stabilizer rudder works pretty well. Has a, you know, the the call sign or the the the, the number of the chopper. It looks good. It, it looks like a fun vehicle mode. It really is. Got a little bit of a a little bit of visible head syndrome, but that's. That's okay. I'm not really going to falter for that, but 
nice clear windows, has a gun, has a radar dome. Uh, uh, <laughs> um, yeah, a lot of exposed robot mode right there. <laughs> um, again, again, I'm not really faulting it. It's, it's you know, Bayformers, as, as, much of I as much as I sometimes have a low opinion of the Bayformers, this design element, this aesthetic is not easy to turn into a physical representation. So, you know, you get a decent chopper mode out of this, with the exception of the popping out panels. You do get a decent robot. Uh, you do get veba da da. You do get a decent vehicle mode out of this. I, I would just be careful of the propellers. You know, it just that this is going to be a problem, I can tell. So, let's take a look at the 2007 Voyager class blackout. And propellers are a little fiddly on this guy, too. And he's also panel. He's got panel issues, too. You know, especially right back there, but... I mean, this is the size difference between the two blackouts. And, you know, uh, I've, I've kind of had this guy in storage for a long time. I haven't really displayed him much, but even even him, I mean, he's an okay, he's an okay vehicle mode. With the exception of, you know, this part has, like, never, ever locked in. But... You know there is a there is a huge size difference between these two versions of Blackout. Not you know complaining. Um, like I said, I think that was supposed to be the more screen accurate one. This one was. This is like I said, 2007. They they you know Hasbro were still getting acclimated to the whole movie verse as well. So he they probably took a few liberties, made him maybe a little bit chunkier or different than they than they normally you know than they would later on down the road. Um, another quick vehicle mode comparison. Age of Extinction, Optimus Prime. Uh, that, I mean, that, I don't know if that's really to scale with each other right there. They, that's probably not really to scale. Maybe if Optimus was a little bit smaller, but, you know, it, it's it's here. It's a comparison, you know. I'm sure they'll look good together in robot mode. I'm hoping. So, uh, without further ado, let's, um, let's get to transforming this guy. Oh my god. And here we have Oh Um Leader Class Blackout. I don't even think I did it right. I don't even think I fully did it right. Like that was a workout. I I, I literally walked three miles today. You know, Pokemon Go. You know, catching Charizards left and right. And walking three miles was less exhausting than than transforming this guy. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Blackout's a bit of a challenge. A little bit. I mean, he's just very fiddly. As I said with the chopper mode, the panels coming apart and everything, a lot of these panels is getting in the way, and it really slows you down. And, of course, you know, you're worried about breaking the panels. And um, so that kind of slowed me down even more. 
Um, and like I said, he's all discombobulated up here. But then again, like, you know, Bayformer's aesthetic, discombobulated does kind of go with the territory. Um, even though, yes, I did screw it up. I, I think that's supposed to go up there like that. I think that's supposed to go up like that, I think. There, yeah, that's supposed to go, yeah, okay, there we go. That, that's looking a little bit better. Um, and I think I screwed up his, how did I do that? How did I do that with the hand? Like, th that's not supposed to, it's supposed to kind of go under. Ah! Damn you! I think. Right? It's supposed to go under the hand. I, I think I did something wrong. I'm pretty sure. I don't know. Yeah, okay, there we go. <laughs> you know, I've been, um, there we go. Look at him. So, uh, yeah, I, I've been sitting on this toy for about two weeks. I got him about two weeks ago. I've kind of been waiting to put him in front of the camera before opening him. So this is my first time doing it. This was a bit of a challenge for me. Ugh. I can't win. I can't win. There we go. <laughs> okay, so yeah, you know, I've been sitting with this guy for about two weeks. This, this is my really my first time doing it. I like it, but yes, he is a challenge. So let's let's get on to blackout. He is um, he is a scrap metal monster. He is a huge mess, and I'm not really complaining. I actually, as I said, I like blackout. This is an interesting robot mode. I mean, he's just just pure insanity just looking at this guy um looking close up we have this crazy looking head sculpt it's just basically a giant horrific bug monster um he looks just mean as hell i love i love this silver paint silver paint it's like silvery gray paint gunmetal i get gunmetal yeah it's like a gunmetal paint it looks really good he doesn't have a great deal of head or you know head move i mean he can look left and right definitely you know up and down but he doesn't have a full like head rotation or anything but i mean that's that's a good range of mo oh 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 sorry that's a good <laughs> range of motion right there i mean for especially something as big as he is um moving on to the arms uh which are complicated because they are like double hinged here. Uh, his arms can definitely go up like that. They can go back like that. Uh, they... An unofficial universal movement right there. Uh, an unofficial mo universal movement right here. They are supposed to tab in at this area, but doesn't really tab in. And I'm not really complaining. At least it gives him just slightly more articulation. So I'm, you know, I'm okay with that. Um, ah! A little bit of bicep swivel, elbow. He does have, you know, kind of a, kind of a limp wrist, but that's okay. You know, maybe, you know, maybe Blackout could just be like furiously keyboarding or something, but I, I would prefer a hand swivel. I really would. I think that would look better. I mean, yeah, he's got a thumb, which is kind of cool. The thumb moves up and down, um, but I, you know. It's 2018, folks. It's 2018. Hasbro could have done it. Hasbro could have easily have done that. Um, anyway, same thing here. Same thing with this hand. Just all the same stuff. So uh, there's no waist swivel at all. Nothing there because this there, that that transformation just won't allow it. So moving on to his legs. Very tight ratchets. You know, very tight. Like just wow. Um, and there is a thigh swivel, very tight, again, uh, double knee, does have a little bit of that chicken leg thing going on, and he does have, um, does have a bit of an ankle thing, an, an ankle tilt, oh, both ways, alright, so it's an ankle tilt, yeah, so yeah, is there a swivel, no swivel, it's an ankle, but yeah, good ankles, good ankles, um, and I, now I'm not a huge fan of the whole chicken leg thing, um, I mean, I, I personally would just prefer just a, 
straighten them up uh, like that. And, um, and, and yeah, he's got some skinny legs. <laughs> Blackout. Blackout has got some really, really skinny legs. You know, it's not like they could have used any of this craziness to fill that up. God, no. Why, why would you want to put any of this to good use there? But whatever. Um, I like Blackout. I do. I really like him. <laughs> Those skinny legs, though, do uh, they're kind of they're kind of silly. They're they're a little on the silly side. Um, but uh, oh, he's having trouble standing. He's almost down. Okay, so I, I do like I do like the rotor cape that he has. <laughs> you know, that's always kind of a fun look. Um, it is. It, it is. I, I actually do like the whole rotor cape. I actually do like this whole crazy assembly up there. Sorry. I actually do like this whole crazy assembly up here. Like, I think I think this is supposed to be his EMP blaster. Like, this is his primary weapon. Just like, boom, and then, you know, and then everything goes dark. Although, as a giant robot, you would think that EMP would take himself out, too. But, you know, whatever. Um, he does have, you know, he does have his uh, other gun right here on his chest. A little bit of a nipple cannon. That's okay. Um, you know, I guess you could do that to fire. It's... Can't imagine this doing a lot of damage, but whatever. Um, now, of course, um, Blackout also came with a little buddy. And the, for those of you who remember the 2017 movie, he came with Scorponok. And um, <laughs> Scorponok is a cool little guy. He really is. I'm just going to... Whoa. Can you focus? Are we focusing? So, um... Scorpion is nicely painted, nice little silver, silver plastic or silver paint, you know, the bronze paint, um, cool little detail at the engine and now all that stuff. And, you know, it, it actually looks kind of cool. Like, I do like this. You know, it does have a little bit of articulation right there at the, at the elbow, nothing at the pincers, but at the tail. Um, it can, it could be, it was stored in vehicle mode. I don't know if you saw it when I was flipping the, the, the helicopter under, but even in robot mode. Um, little Scorponok can just go right there. And he can just kind of rest on, you know, he can just kind of rest on Blackout's back like, like a little parasite guy. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, this isn't so bad. This is actually kind of cool. It is a cool little robot mode. So, I think it's time we move on to maybe a comparison or two. And here we have Blackout with the last night Optimus Prime. And yeah, Blackout kind of just towers over him, even though like the head might line up just a little bit. I think he's a little bit taller. But this isn't bad. This isn't bad. This is kind of cool. You know, I could see Optimus kind of going up against him, like, you know, going up against his hulking behemoth of a Decepticon. I like this. This is good. This is good. While we're also, yeah, you know, while I also have him handy and dandy, let's get last night Megatron. And Megatron just looks really cool. I, I, I like, I like this Megatron with this blackout. This is kind of cool. I, I, I can dig it. I can dig it. I totally do. Um, you know, the last night might not have been a great movie, though. Really, none of the Bayformers are great movies. But, um, you know, I think The Last Night had some good toys. Had some good toys. I have to, I've always wanted to do a review of him and him. I never did it. Never did it. But whatever. Uh, anyway, you know, these guys look good with this blackout. And, and, you know, just for the heck of it, just for another scale transformer, you know, here we have Rescue Ratchet, which, you know, because I'm, I'm a bit of a scale Nazi. It has to be the scale for me. And I would say these four guys look good together in the same room. You know, I can see this. This works for me, this this size matchup. Um, now, to take these guys out real quick, there is, however, you know, something that doesn't work for me. Like, let's say you were to take Blackout and have him hang out with, let's say, Revenge of the Fallen Megatron. Okay? I mean, even though... 
well, especially with the add-on kits here, Revenge of the Fall Megatron looks pretty decent. This is not a good size for me. This doesn't work. This shows... I mean, this is this is a leader class toy from 2009. This is a leader class toy of, you know, 2018. They've gone down a little bit. Though, I mean, height-wise, I get it. That still kind of lines up, but, you know. Uh, this this per personally, personally, maybe for you, this will be fine. You know, it's all subjective. But just, just as a comparison of the two leader classes in the Bayformis universe, you know. Um, I just don't see Revenge of the Fallen Megatron looking too, looking too great with Blackout. As one last comparison, I did forget to transform the Voyager class Blackout, so I just took a quick picture of them in editing. So here we have the, the size difference between the original 2007 Blackout and the 2018 Leader class Blackout. Um, Obviously, there is a difference in both quality, look, aesthetic, everything. Like I said, the 2007 one, you know, Hasbro was still trying to... They were still getting acclimated to the whole movie design, so it is a more simplistic, incoherent piece of nonsense, where the 2018 is a, is a fully realized, incoherent piece of nonsense. As I said, I keep saying, I do like Blackout, but, you know, just there is the difference in incoherency, I guess. <laughs> but anyway, um, I think that wraps up everything here. Um, I, I do like this figure. It, it is fun. It looks like the character. Um, it, it, with all of the stuff here, you might not be able to get a lot of dynamic poses out of them. I mean, maybe a couple of things, but... You know, I, I would say you could probably get more menacing poses out of him and less action shots out of him. But I, I, I do like Blackout. I would say my biggest concern would be all the panels, all the fiddliness that you have to do to straighten this guy out. Um, that could be a concern because the more fiddly the toy, the more likely you're just going to accidentally snap a piece off. Um, so for a $50 price point... I would be cautious in buying him. I'd be cautious on transforming him. I wouldn't do it just casually. And to be perfectly honest, is you know these are toys. I would not give this to a kid. This is definitely for more of an adult collector or someone who's a little bit more careful with their belongings. But I would still have to say it's recommended. So yeah, that's it. I'm Jim Classic, and you've been watching Geekin' It. You know what, during my review, I forgot one more thing to talk about. Inserted in the box of the Leader Class Blackout is a cardboard display case featuring, you know, the Transformers logo on one side, Studio Series, and the number on the other side. And in the middle is a, is a nice, um, not, maybe not screenshot, but it's a nice image of the military base that Blackout attacks in the beginning of the Transformers movie. And it's just, it's a, it's a little cardboard display that you can put Blackout on. Now, looking at it, it is pretty wide. You know, it's, it's designed to fold up and fit inside the box, and then you can sprawl it out. I mean, this thing's pretty big. I'm not a huge fan of, like, display pieces like this. So, um, I'm probably never going to use this ever again. I, I don't know. I might keep it. I might throw it out. I haven't decided yet. But, yeah, it's a, um cardboard display piece, you know, and for all of the Studio Series figures, the Deluxes, the Voyagers, and the Leaders, it's all going to have a little diorama scene in the background, you know, featuring their most prominent moment. Um, so yeah, that's it. Just wanted to talk about the insert real quick. You know, it's there, it exists, it's okay. I don't really have a strong opinion about it one way or the other. Hi friends, thanks again for watching my video. I've got a friend who could really use some assistance with her budding career and college funds.
Jean-Vievre started a GoFundMe page because she is in need of getting supplies for her passion of aerial acrobatics. She needs these supplies in order to perform the amazing aerial stunts that she does. Not only has she been performing her acrobatics, but she was recently accepted to Sanka, Seattle's pre-preparatory circus program. This is what she really wants to do with her life, and she does need some help. Even if it's just a few dollars, you know, it'll help. Even if you can't donate, then please share the link, which is below in the description page. She really is a great person, and she does deserve this assistance. Thanks again, and have a good one.